I really love llamas, not just for what, what they're like, but also because of this new avenue of the fiber. It is an amazing attribute to the world of fibers and fabrics and knitters and crocheters. I love creating things out of my own animals and I can wear them and say, oh my goodness, I made this collar out of my llama Liesel. The back is my llama Jewel. It's just a wonderful, fulfilling feeling. In the, the fiber world, we're an exotic. There's lots of alpaca. There's lots of different kinds of sheep. And it has all these different colors and styles. You can felt with it. You can needle felt with it. There's just so many different uses. And the nice thing about llamas is I can cure myself. I don't have to pay someone to come do it. I take the fiber, I wash it. Uh, I lay it out on screens and it dries. And then I send it to the mill and they make it into roving. Once it's in roving, I can make anything. I can wet felt, I can needle felt, you can do so many things. Once it's in roving, from there, sky's the limit. So I'm Terry from Altamont, New York. And we have a llama farm on 30 acres. I was a horse person most of my life and then I fell in love with llamas after that. And we started with three and now we have over 20. And I got into fiber because some of my llamas are Surrey llamas. Now. And I didn't want to card the Surrey llama fiber and make regular yarn. I wanted to preserve the locks and show it somehow. So I taught myself how to lock spin one lock at a time and use it as a decorative yarn. Llama fiber makes amazing yarn. We've come a long way with breeding to produce a nice fiber as well as a quality animal. So for me, I do send some of my yarn to a mill. They wash it, they dye it if you like, or leave it natural. A lot of times, I'll mix in 20% of merino or some type of sheep wool to give it a little more memory. And sometimes I don't. Uh, with specific animals, I might not. And then it, they make it into roving, and I can either get roving back from the mill to spin myself, or they can make it into yarn at the weight that I like, whether it be sport weight, worsted weight, or bulky weight for me to knit, or some people do it to sell. I raise sheep at a farm in Pennsylvania. Someone said, get a llama. I said, well, four. And they said, it'll protect your sheep. So I got a llama, and when that llama I loved. My husband loved the llama, and he said, that llama is so smart. He said, if you get rid of those sheep and goats, you can get as many of those as you want. And there, and I ended up, now I have nine llamas. I am not a big shoveler, but I can make things. So at the Big E, one of the classes they have is called Lead Line, and that's the class I can win. That's the class I can use my creativity in the summertime, I can wet belt yardage, and I can make things. And so I have been really successful at the Big E making things. I've been successful uh, making things that people want to buy and then they buy them from me. And so it helps me pay for my llamas. One of the best things that I found out about doing the needle felting and the wet felting is when you use straight llama fiber, it doesn't have the memory of sheep fiber. So I always ask the mill to blend 20, about 20% 20 sheep with my llama. It gives it memory. It helps it to not stretch as it, it's worn over and over and over. So I've learned that if you're gonna wet felt, don't go 100% llama, not that llama's bad, there's a benefit to a lot of fibers, so I add the sheep to it. Llama fiber has no lanolin, so it, it doesn't have the stickiness. I can keep llama fiber for a year in a bag as long as I keep it in an area that's not too hot, and it's fine. With the sheep fiber, if I kept my sheep fiber in a bag in the same environment, it would be really sticky the next year. So the llama fiber is hypoallergenic. I'm Nikki Kuklinski, and I've been involved with llamas for over 30 years now. I started in llamas as a 4-H and FFA kid in Washington State back in the 80s. And I got interested in fleece because I learned to spin, and as I worked through that whole process, I learned that different places spun differently and really enjoyed working with them and wanted to gain more knowledge. So I went to a clinic in 2009 to learn how to evaluate fleece, and then I became a fleece judge. The whole point of showing in fiber classes is we want to exhibit our fleeces to help um, show their value and it's important to know which use your particular fleece fits so that you market it to the appropriate market. So 
so that people know what to, to use it for and, and they don't end up with a fleece that was sold to them as being good for close to the skin but then it turns out that this is a really scratchy fleece that should have been pelted. So it's really important to have good education and know what the proper use is for your fleece. When you're going through and you're preparing a fleece to show, the best thing you can do is paint on your type of llama. For regular fleeces, I brush the llama completely out. I bathe them with something that's not real perfumey or strong smelling. Then I let them drip dry and I shear the animal. And as I'm shearing them, I pick out my second cuts and then I'll start to separate it into bags. And I have a seconds bag, which are things that are still usable, but I probably shouldn't show things like lower part of the belly that might be good for felting or it might be good for certain projects that probably shouldn't be shown. Carol Ray from Macalo Llamas, and I have 35 llamas, and we started with our llamas to help us with mowing the fields. The North American Llama Fiber Cooperative is a great way to use your fiber, and the fiber cooperative's purpose is to add value to our llamas um, by utilizing their fiber in different ways. The co-op produces Pendleton blankets, custom-made rugs, and llama socks that are 85% llama. So it's a great way for people to be able to donate their fiber for a use and then get some products back. It's very, very warm and it's very lightweight because the fibers are hollow. It's great to be able to put something on that is warm but not heavy. And it's, of course, all natural, so you're getting away from the synthetics. It's the new exotic um, because there's nothing like it in the world. We appreciate you taking the time for watching this video. If you want any more information about GALA, which is the Greater Appalachian Llama and Alpaca Association, you can go to www.galaonline.org.